Okay, now we're going to go over the algebraic method of linear programming. And we can use this method when we have two decision variables and two constraints. And it gets us right to uh, what our optimal decision variables will be and what our maximum profit would be. And we can use the algebraic method again when you have two decision variables and two constraints. If you have more than that, if you have three constraints or you have three decision variables, then you've got to use Microsoft Excel using the solver function, and that will get you to your answer as well. But if you have two decision variables and two constraints, then the algebraic method will work for you. The textbook talks about uh, various graphical methods. Um, they talk about the ISO profit line solution and the four corner point solution. Um, I don't like either of those methods. Uh, there's a lot of steps uh, involved in them uh, to get you to your final answer of what's your optimal profit and what are your um, decision variables. So I'm not going to teach those to you. And I'm going to go straight to the algebraic method, uh, which is no longer taught in this revision of the textbook. They used to teach it. They don't anymore. I'm going to teach it to you because I like it better. So uh, you do not need to understand the ISO profit line uh, solution and the four corners point method. Uh, neither of those you will be tested on uh, in this course. So again, the algebraic method can be used when you've got two decision variables and two constraints. It will help us to solve for um, what is our um, maximum profit and what uh, exact number our decision variables uh, should be. So our steps in doing the algebraic method are step one, change constraint inequalities to equalities. So you're going to take that greater than or equal to and make it equal to. So you're going to make it equal. Step two is eliminate one unknown variable and solve for the second unknown. So you're going to have an x1 and an x2 because you have two decision variables. You're going to eliminate one of them and solve for one, either your x1 or your x2. So you're going to solve for the second unknown. Then you're going to take that unknown and plug it into either one of your equations and solve for the other unknown. So that's step three. Plug the solution into either equation and solve for the first unknown. And then step four, you're going to have your x1 and your x2 decision variables determined. Now you plug them into the objective function and you will solve the objective function to figure out what you're uh, maximizing. You're, you're maximizing your z, so your maximum profit in the two examples we're going to go over right now. So this first example we're going to go over, you've seen a couple times already. That is Clickman Electronics. So everything you can see on the screen, maximizing z of 7x1 plus 5x2, that's your objective function. We determined that um, many lecture recordings ago. And then subject to your constraints uh, for electronic and assembly. So you've got your 4x1 plus 3x2 is less than or equal to 240 hours for the electronic constraint. And then your assembly constraint is 2x1 plus 1x2 less than or equal to 100 hours in assembly. So step one. We are going to change from inequalities and make them both equal to. So we're going to take that less than or equal to and make them both equal to for both of those uh, constraints. Then we're going to eliminate one variable and solve for the other. So for this example, I'm going to multiply equation number two, my assembly constraint, by a negative two and add to equation two, the electronics. Okay, so this is just, take a step back for a second, this is just regular algebra. We're trying to eliminate one variable. I have picked the number negative two. There are other options that will work for this, uh, but it's the most straightforward one because I only have to use one number. If you were to pick another number for assembly, you might have to um, multiply other x1 and x2s. So I'm just going to go straight for it, find something that's divisible, and pick that number. So I'm multiplying by negative two. And that gives us 4x1 plus 3x2 equals 240. That electronic um, equation did not change. But now for assembly, it's now negative 4x1 minus 2x2 equals negative 200 because I've multiplied 2, 1, and 100 by negative 2. So that gives me negative 4, negative 2, and negative 200. The 4 x1s now cancel each other out. That leaves me with 1x2 equals 40, and 40 divided by 1 gives me an x2 of 40. Now let's solve for the next um, variable, which is x1. So we can plug our x2 of 40 into either equation and solve for x1. I'm choosing equation number 1. So our x2 is 40 
multiplied by 3. So 4x1 plus 120 gives us 240. Then we've got 4x1 equals 240 minus 120. So we're going to take that 120, subtract it from the 240, and that gives us 120. So 4x1 equals 120. When you take 120 and divide it by 4, you get an x1 of 30. Okay. So you've now solved for your x1 decision variable and your x2 decision variable. You got there very quickly. You didn't have to use the simplex method in Microsoft Excel Solver, and you didn't have to go through all those steps that they show you in the graphical method in the textbook. You got straight to the point with your x2 of 40 and your x1 of 30, but you are not done yet because we want to know what is our maximum profit in the objective function. So you will plug in x1 and x2 into the objective function, and that gives you 7 multiplied by your x1 of 30 plus 5 multiplied by x2 of 40 gives you 210 plus 200 equals 410. And if you recall from the examples we've done on Glickman Electronics, your maximum profit was 410. Your x1, which I think was um, x pods, uh, is 30. And your x2, which I think was, was um, blueberries, is uh, 40. So we just solved Glickman Electronics very quickly using the algebraic method. Okay, now let's do our second example of the algebraic method. Um, I have given you the objective function of maximizing z equals 4x1 plus 3x2. I've given you the constraints. So this one has material of 6x1 plus 4x2 is less than or equal to 48 pounds. And your labor is 4x1 plus 8x2 is less than or equal to 80 hours. So we're going to solve this algebraically, just like we did Glickman Electronics on the last slide. So our first step is to change the inequalities into equalities. And so that's simply just making that same equation here with equals 2 for 48 and equals 2 for 80. Then we're going to eliminate one variable and solve for the other. So for this one, it's just a sheer coincidence that I'm also going to multiply it by negative 2 and add it to the equation number 2, which is labor. So you now have negative 12 plus x1, sorry, negative 12x1 minus 8x2 equals negative 96. So we've taken it and multiplied it against material. So negative 2 multiplied by 6 is negative 12, negative 2 multiplied by 4 is negative 8, and negative 2 multiplied by 48 is negative 96. So equation 2 stays the same. We now have a negative 8x1 equals negative 16, and that gives you your x1 of 2. So now we're going to plug x1 of 2 into either one of the equations. I'm choosing equation number 1. So 6x1 in your x1 equals 2 gives you 6 multiplied by 2 is 12, plus 4x2 equals 48. You're going to take 12 minus 48, and that gives you 36. And then when you take 4 divided by 36, or 36 divided by 4, you get an x2 of 9. So you've now solved your two decision variables. Your x1 equals 2. Your x2 equals 9. You simply plug those into the objective function, which is now 4 multiplied by 2, which gives you 8, and 3 multiplied by 9, which gives you 27. So for this example, your answer is 35. So your maximum z, which is likely to maximize profit, is 35. Your x1 is 2 and your x2 is 9. And you've now solved two problems algebraically in less than 10 minutes. So this is a very quick and efficient way when you have two decision variables and two constraints, you can solve it algebraically and you don't have to use Microsoft Excel.